This Saturday, March 5th, folks from all over will descend upon Adams, Massachusetts for the town's Thunderfest celebration, inspired by the legendary Thunderbolt ski run. Created by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s, the Thunderbolt on Mount Greylock has hosted world-class skiers for decades. After falling by the wayside for several years, the Thunderbolt is now seeing a rebirth. Connecting Point executive producer Tony Dunn and videographer Mark Langeman take us down the mountain for this slice of local skiing history. The Thunderbolt Ski Trail is located on Mount Craylock. It's sort of a, a retro ski experience. You have to hike up. There aren't any ski lifts, no rope toes. So the approach is demanding enough on the legs and then once at the summit we now have to transition over and get ourselves down a run that is over 2,000 vertical feet. It travels just about two miles and it's a challenging course. Again, it's for people that want that experience to, to actually hike up and then ski down the mountain the way it used to be. The craze for skiing in the Berkshires probably starts with the 1932 Olympics uh, where skiing became very popular and we're trying it out on local slopes, old farmers fields, wood roads, but there was nothing like a professionally cut ski trail in the region. So in 1933, uh, the Winter Sports Committee in Western Massachusetts had to convene a meeting of local ski clubs to create this Thunderbolt ski trail. And over a period of three months, in 1934, from August to November, the Civilian Conservation Corps here on Mount Greylock cut the Thunderbolt ski trail, just using hand tools and uh, 300 pounds of dynamite. And then that very following year, 1935, they held their first ever downhill race on the Thunderbolt course. A lot of the boys from the mills and Adams ended up skiing on the trail. They cut the ski bug. Skiers like Maurice Greeny Girton and Rudy Konezhny. This being a World Cup event back in the day, ultimately many of these racers went on to be Olympians themselves. Famous skiers like Dick Durrance. He won the first Thunderbolt race here in 1935, the downhill, and then he represented the, the United States in the Olympics in 1936 in Germany. He went on later in life to be very well known in the ski industry, uh, helping to develop Aspen in Colorado, Alta in Utah, and Sun Valley, Idaho. Bob Livermore was a Harvard uh, a skier, and uh, he represented the United States in 1936 at the Garmisch Partenkirchen Olympics in Germany also. So he was on the U.S. downhill team. Uh, the thousands of people that came to see these races in the early 1930s, they came out from New York and Boston on the snow trains, and they would line the trails while these skiers went down. And there was rarely a, 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 a skier that would remain upright for the entire race. So that, that was the golden era of racing the Thunderbolt, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Over the years, it wasn't maintained as a ski trail. It sort of fell off in popularity about the 1960s. When the invention of a ski lift came about, all of a sudden, uh, racers no longer wanted to take the two-hour hike up the mountain. And just recently, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years, people have been seeking that experience and have sought permission to cut the Thunderbolt trail back to its original widths. People are now willing to get themselves up on the mountain and start challenging themselves and they've also held some some uh, annual races there. With the Thunderbolt ski race there's a, a new life, there's a new passion for the outdoor community in this area. You can explore the Thunderbolt in winter or summer. You can visit the summit uh, where the Thunderbolt ski shelter is uh, and that's sort of a remnant uh, feature that's still in use today uh, by snowmobilers and skiers and hikers in wintertime. The Thunderbolt is still just as challenging and just as hair-raising as many other runs. Uh, just being out in a remote area is a feeling of you and the mountain. It's a really unique and really special feeling rather than feeling like you're playing Plinko down a regular ski run with thousands of other people. Here it's uh, the few and far between that come up there.